Sit down, strap in, grab a cup of coffee, and get ready to hear about the best university on the planet. Hey guys, it is Taylor Skirt, and welcome back to another video. We're doing another sit down talk video about Exeter University. Bear in mind that in this video, even though COVID is a thing, obviously, uh, Miss Rona has not just disappeared, unfortunately. I'm not gonna be talking a lot about what that means for us at university because I actually did a whole video on that. So go check that out if you haven't already. I'm gonna be talking in this video about university life semi-normally. I'm not just talking about Freshers Week in this video, I'm talking about the whole of first year at university. I want you to absolutely nail it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, things like clubs will open up later on in the year and stuff will go back to normal. Hey guys, it's me. Um, obviously, you can see that. Um, <laughs> this turned out to be a really, really long video because I was trying to cram so much information into it in one go. So I'm going to put some timestamps in the description so you can skip to parts if you want to. Let's get going. So we're going to start with campus. Okay, let's be real. The Exeter University campus is one of the most beautiful campuses in England. It has so many trees that you can be on campus and not be able to see a single academic building. It's like you're in a forest and there's a stream and there's squirrels but you're also at a university, like it is beautiful. Unfortunately, it is on top of a hill, which kind of sucks, but your legs will be amazing. You will have such great legs. And also the view of the entire city when you're on campus is just so pretty. It's just, oh. There are like a million different buildings on campus and because of all the trees, it's kind of easy to get lost. And that is why Google Maps is your friend. So do not forget, Google Maps is your friend, okay? Especially at the beginning, no one knows where they are. Everyone is lost, even if they don't look like it. We're all lost. But once you line your way around, it's a super, super chilled, calming campus. The center of the campus is called the Forum, which is basically the hub. It's got the campus bar there. It's got the three floor library. It's got a bunch of lecture halls, it's got a Pret, it's got a Costa, it's got like a million different study areas, but there's also millions of different study spaces all over campus. There's so, so many, I'm still finding some of them. You will never fail to find a space to study. And an update since I did my coronavirus at uni video, there are now gonna be outdoor marquees that are heated with Wi-Fi that you can also study at because we now have to be better spaced indoors, so we might be able to use one out of two chairs sort of thing, so that's pretty funky. We're gonna have marquees outside. But I absolutely just love the campus. It is the main reason I chose Exeter is because I just walked on the campus and I was so, so calm and happy and it was just... Green! It was so green. We bleed green, okay? We love green at Exeter, okay? <laughs> Right, let's move on to the next section. The next section is kind of a big one. Honestly, I could do an entire video on it if that's what you want, and it is accommodation. There's loads of different types of accommodation no matter what uni you're going to. There's studio, there's ensuite, there's standard, and there's twin. So studio is where you basically have a tiny apartment. You have a bed, a bathroom, and you have a kitchen all squished into a little unit, which is really good if you're a person that needs their peace and quiet. It is definitely less social than some other options because you are just you have everything you need in one place but for some people that go to uni are really sociable out there and just need to come back and have their own space it can be really nice there's ensuite which is really really lucky people that get their own bathroom that is so so popular obviously it's cleaner it's more private it's just an all-around good option but it's also quite expensive. So there is the standard option, which is what I was in, which is shared flats, where for me, there was seven people and two bathrooms and it varies, of course. And I was really, really worried about this at first. I thought this is gonna be disgusting. People do horrible things in the showers that I do not wanna know about, but it was actually completely fine. I just bought a pair of shower shoes and didn't leave my stuff in the bathroom and I didn't have any problems. It was nice and clean. Maybe I just lucked out on the flat front, but it worked absolutely fine for me. And then there's roommate, which is obviously a lot less private. You don't really get that downtime to yourself, which some people absolutely need. But a good thing about having a roommate is the second that you arrive, you know somebody at university. I only know one person that had a roommate and they said the only issue they had was with boundaries. Their roommate was bringing 
taking people home a lot and my friend wasn't very comfortable with that. So all I would say is that if you do get a twin room, make sure that you and your roommate tell each other your boundaries at the very, very start so that you can't clash. Other than picking a room type, there is accommodation type. So there's catered and there's self-catered. Catered food gets cooked for you in a cafeteria and everyone from your accommodation goes to the same room to eat together and self-catered, every flat has its own kitchen and you make your own meals. It really depends on your budget and whether or not you enjoy cooking. I'm not a massive fan of cooking, but I thought I'm going to university, when's a better time to learn? So I went for self-catered myself. I also decided that it was more sociable because we had a space that was common, that we could host pre's in, that we could have movie nights in, which is harder to do in catered accommodation because you're very limited to how many people you can fit in your bedroom and if you go to a common area instead it's not very private and you could be easily interrupted by other groups or people but both are very very social but you do have specific meal times so if you have a class or a sport that overruns and you can't get to your cafeteria in time you don't get food and you go hungry unless you get like uber eats or something so do bear that in mind however you can eat at catered halls if you don't go there. So that's another option if it's a Saturday and you really don't feel like cooking. You could just pay for a meal and go get some brunch. And then there's on-campus versus off. I didn't even realize that there were off-campus options till I got assigned to one and I ended up living there for a year. And at first I was completely bummed out about it. I wanted to go to La Frauda, which is where everyone wanted to go. And I didn't get that. And I ended up being off-campus in a place called Northern Hay. And I was super, super, super sad about it until I moved in. I moved in and I realized I was right on the high street. I was right next to the biggest club in Exeter and a really pretty park. And I was only a short walk away from campus and I ended up absolutely loving it there. So on campus versus off, all down to personal preference. Would you rather be able to roll out of bed and go to class or roll out the club and go home? So that is completely down to your own personal preference. So which accommodations would I recommend? On campus, for catered accommodation, I would definitely recommend Burke's Grange Village. It's a really nice student area. It's a village, so... <laughs> and the rooms there are super nice. The biggest con I have about Burke's Grange Village is Cardiac Hill, which is this super steep staircase hill that you have to go up to get to class. You're about 12 minutes from the forum and to get there, you have to go up this really, really steep hill, but you get used to it. You get used to it. I did not live there. I only did it a few times. I did not get used to it. I'm still winded from that bloody hill. But yeah, uh, that is the biggest con about Burke's Grange, but it is a really, really lovely place to go. On campus self-catered, I would definitely recommend and La Frauda. It is extremely popular. So there's also Rose and St. Germans, which are two slightly less well-known, but just as good accommodations right next to La Frauda. Again, in a really nice student area. And these are right next to class. Also, it's right next to the campus club, but that is also possibly a con because you're right next to the campus club. For post-grads on campus, I would definitely recommend Sprayton Way. This is a completely new accommodation that is opening for the first time this year. So it's never had people in it before. So all I know about it are the pictures, but they look incredible. And it's just for post-grad. So I would definitely recommend that. For off-campus, obviously I'm gonna recommend Northern Hay. That's where I went. It was right on the high street, right next to the biggest club in Exeter. There's a really nice park and it's a 25 minute walk to campus, which sounds like a lot, but you get so used to it because in Exeter, you just walk everywhere anyway. There's also so because you're on the high street, you're right next to all the buses. So that's a different option if you want to take a bus up to campus. There's also Printworks, which is a really, really nice accommodation. It's a little bit more expensive than Northern Hay. It does have its own gym though, which is pretty cool. It's right next to a club as well and just off the high street. So that's another really, really good option. And then for St. Luke's campus, I don't really know much about this, but I've heard really good things about Rowancroft for first year accommodation. So I'd probably recommend that one. It's right next to the campus. What happens if you move in and you really don't like your accommodation or your flat? First thing I would recommend is don't make that decision straight away. Give it some time, give it a week, give it two weeks. And then if you still don't like it, you can email 
email the university and apply for accommodation transfer. Now, if you do want to change accommodation, I would recommend you do it in the first term because that is statistically when most first years drop out of university. So that is when there'll be the most spaces. So you're more likely to be able to get back to La Frauda or Holland Hall or whatever your first choice was. Second year accommodation is my next section. And I know it's weird. You're just about to go into first year. Why am I already mentioning second year? But you're gonna have to sort this out fast as in October fast. I know it's it's really ridiculous, but unfortunately second years and third years start looking really, really early and nab all the good houses. So you're gonna have to start looking early. This is really annoying because sometimes you haven't met your friends yet or the people that you wanna be with. And very, very often it turns out that you decide to live with someone in your first couple of weeks of uni and then it comes to next year and you're living with them and you haven't spoke to them in six months and it's just really awkward. So all I can give for advice for that is don't go around willy nilly saying, hey, I'll live with you, hey, I'll live with you, hey, I'll live with you, and then backing out because it can cause a lot of drama so please just stay chilled just be careful but be swift okay it's it's difficult you're probably not gonna live with your greatest friends in your second year okay next section fresh is fair now obviously COVID-19 fresh as fair is basically non-existent this year. There is no people standing on campus throughout the week trying to sell you their club or society. It is all online. I'm gonna put in the description a bunch of links that you should go to to see exactly which sports and societies Exeter has. And also to our Facebook page for Exeter so you can learn all about all these societies. And if there's anything that you're interested in, just find out who's in committee and pop one of them a message on Facebook and they will be so happy to talk to you. All I can say about this is keep your mind open. Keep your options open. For me, I had no interest in sailing before I came to university. And then I was walking up Forum Hill on campus and I came across the Sailing Club, EUSC. Uh, just rep that for a second. I ended up joining the Sailing Club, which I was totally not expecting. But that's actually where my main social life is now. That's where loads of my friends are. And it was completely strange and unexpected. And unfortunately, because of COVID-19, you guys won't be able to walk up the hill and find something new and strange and interesting like Harry Potter Quidditch Society. Yes, that's a thing. Do keep an open mind and try out loads of different things. That being said, <laughs> Don't spend all your money on societies and clubs. I made this mistake in first year. I was interested in so many different things and I threw my money at them and I joined all these societies and clubs and what happened is I ended up throwing most of that money down the drain. It's not that I didn't enjoy the societies or the clubs, it's that it didn't work out. For example, I was super interested in lacrosse. I thought it was a really weird and wonderful sport that I'd never tried before and I wanted to give it a shot. So I went to a bunch of the taster sessions and freshers week, which hopefully there's still gonna be a few taster sessions so go to as many of these as you can. And I really, really enjoyed it. I was useless at it, but I really, really enjoyed it and the people that were there were really, really lovely. So I decided to join the club. Unfortunately for me, what I hadn't noticed is that the same time that they practiced was the same time I had class. So I unfortunately paid all this money for a club that I couldn't attend. So do be careful where you put your money. And because of COVID-19, especially this year, not being able to learn that much about your club before the end of Freshers Week, before you have to join, maybe just, again, Facebook message a member of the committee and see if it's possible that you could hold off your membership money for a little bit longer just to make sure that this is where you want to be. I don't know if that's possible. But if it is, that'd be super cool. But yeah, my advice for looking at societies and sports is definitely just keep an open mind, talk to everyone. Do not stress if Freshers Week ends and you are a few weeks into your uni experience and you still haven't found that perfect society or sports club. Do not stress, okay? Because in January, we have refreshes, which is another Freshers Week where we do it all again and you can join new societies. I'm about to go into third year and I'm still looking to try new things. 
So I'm gonna be joining some new societies this year as well. You're never too late to try something new. Another thing I wanna say in general about Freshers Week is that Freshers Flu is a real thing, okay? It's totally normal, it's kind of necessary. Your immune system is just gonna deal with it and get stronger, it's all gonna be fine. I don't know how badly it's gonna hit this year because obviously we are social distancing from each other and we are wearing masks and being very, very clean. Hopefully, be clean, please. <laughs> But Fresh's flu is real and it is normal and nothing to worry about whatsoever. You're probably gonna get it and if you don't, you are magical. Friends in first year and Fresh's week specifically. The number one thing I can say about this is that everybody is freaking out. Everybody is trying to make friends. Nobody knows anyone. Everyone is in the same boat. The biggest advice I can give on this is say hi. It sounds stupid and simple, but if you think about it, every Every single person that you say hi to is another potential friend. I think the doorbell just rang. Hang on. A few moments later. Woo! Okay. She's back. What was I saying? You are gonna meet so many people, you're not gonna remember any of their names, they're not gonna remember yours. You're gonna meet people on your first day and never see them again. Do not stress if you don't meet your best friends on your first day, okay? Talk to your flatmates, talk to your neighbor's flat, talk to the other people on your floor if you're in catered accommodation or in a studio. Talk to your course mates, join a society, join a sport. Just meet people from all over the university and just pick the people that you wanna stay in contact with. The next section is clubbing which it's kind of sad to talk about because at the moment clubbing is not a thing. There is a myth that in Freshers Week you have to go out every night for the whole week or in some cases for the first two weeks. Me personally I went out for the first nine weeks. Days. I meant days. I went out every night for nine days. Not weeks. That's just ridiculous. Because I came from the middle of nowhere and I'd barely been clubbing before and everything was new and exciting and I did it and I got the worst case of Freshers Flu afterwards. I was taking my cough medicine out of a shot glass for months after that. But if that's not your thing, if you don't wanna go clubbing at all or you only wanna go some nights, do that. You're not a loser if you don't go clubbing. You're not a loser if you don't drink. It is so much better to do what you like to do because if you don't like clubbing, you're not gonna meet the people you wanna be friends with on a night out. But absolutely do it if that's what you wanna do. Sports clubs and societies will hopefully be doing what they do normally, which is have day events and evening events, drinking and non-drinking events. You can go to drinking events and not drink. It'd be kind of strange if you go to non-drinking events and you do drink but each to their own <laughs> but these societies and sports events are really good ways to get to know people and just don't push your limits you know your limits better than anyone else and if you want to go to one of these socials but you don't want to drink and you don't want to go clubbing then just go to the social don't drink and go home before they go to the club it is not mandatory in fact pretty much all clubs and societies at Exeter are really really good at being inclusive and taking your values into account so if you don't want to drink they're not gonna push you First First year of university is all about having fun and finding your own people. If you're the type of person that likes a quiet night in as opposed to a raving night out, then have a quiet night in. This is university, this is so exciting. You're going to a place where no one knows you, you can be your true self. So why, why wouldn't you? Do your thing, do your thing, do not try to conform to what you think you're supposed to be doing just because that's what the media and other people have told you, okay? Money wise, just save up before you go. It is is expensive. Societies range from four quid to 400 quid to join and groceries are expensive, rent is expensive, school supplies and textbooks are expensive, partying is expensive. Freshers week is an expensive time, university is an expensive time so definitely save up before you go. And if you have a maintenance loan or an overdraft, don't get overexcited by that big number in your bank account because that will go quickly. You do not need to buy everyone dinner. <laughs> You're gonna need that money, okay? Next section we're gonna talk about is nightlife in Exeter. Now, loads of people have told me that the nightlife in Exeter wasn't great and I have to completely disagree. Now, I come from Norfolk, which is definitely not a clubbing county. It is not a booming city like Leeds, but Exeter has a bunch of different clubs. It has got mainstream clubs and alternative clubs. It's got loads of different music. In my opinion, I think we are spoilt for choice with clubs 
and pubs, we have got the biggest Weatherspoons in the country. It is massive, it is really pretty, and it is cheap. So obviously it's very popular with the students. It's also right opposite the drama department. So a lot of my money has gone to that Spoons, as I'm sure you can imagine. There's the Ram on campus, which is best known for its curly fries. You have to get the curly fries at the Ram. They also do specific events, like they do a Monday night pub quiz and they do Ramioki, which is karaoke, but Ram, you, you, you get it. There's the Victoria Inn or the Vic on Union Road, which is most popular road for second year student housing. So obviously a very, very popular student pub as well. And then there's others in town like the Exonian, the Black Horse, the Sheb. There's so many. We have so many good pubs. Go on a pub call if you want, explore them all. Okay, onto the club, which are still closed for the moment, but fingers crossed they'll open at some point in the coming year. Now, obviously we've got to start with Timepiece or TP, which is a massive three floor club that is most popular on Wednesday nights which is sports social night which means every sports club has their own socials with their own themes and then we all go to TP and it is it is busy and it is messy and there's rugby boys dressed as babies. It is a very strange night, but it is super, super fun. You don't have to be in a sports club or have gone to a sports social to get in. There's nothing like that at the door. You can go whenever you want, of course. That is just a very big, very popular night. There's also Unit 1, which has Cheesy Tuesdays, which is very popular with the drama students, which has all like the Dancing Queen type numbers. And you either love it or you hate it. And there's Quids in on Thursday which is a very cheap student night. There's Fever, which is really good on Mondays and Thursdays too. There's Vaults, which is the local gay club, but again, anyone can go. And this club is open a lot later than the other clubs. So once you've finished at TP, you can go to Vault, just in case you need a little bit of extra boogie time. Then there's Phoenix, which is an art gallery that sometimes has events. There's the Lemon Grove, which is the campus club, affectionately known as the Lemmy, which is really good on Saturday nights because typically students don't go into town on Saturday nights because that is locals night. Of course, you still can go into town. I've done it plenty times. It is absolutely fine. But students tend to stick around at the Lemmy on Saturday Saturday nights. And then there's the slightly more alternative clubs. There is Move, which is down by the quayside, which is underground and has techno type music. That is really, really cool. Always a wild night. And there's Cavern, which is specifically good for events. One event in particular, which I am obsessed with and I will love to the end of the earth, it has my complete heart, is an event called Cuckoo Cachoo. I just love Cuckoo. Okay, Cuckoo is everything. You have to buy tickets for this event, but you show up in the funky clothes you can muster. There is great music. They give you free lollipops. They give you free stickers. Cuckoo Cachoo is just a dream come true. It rhymed. <laughs> If I could only have one night in Exeter, I would have Cuckoo Cachoo, hands down. That is not one to miss. You have to go to Cuckoo Cachoo. And if there is a cuckoo happening and you need tickets, <laughs> I'm a rep for Cuckoo, so send me a DM and maybe I can get you a ticket. One thing that's very, very strange when you first arrive at Exeter, even for a person that's not been able to go to clubs much before uni, is the opening times for clubs in Exeter. And while they seem really weird, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. In normal places, you're in clubs by 11 o'clock at the earliest, right? In Exeter, you need to have had dinner by five, you're at your social by six, you're in the club by eight. You're in the club very, very early. Especially on Wednesdays for TP, you need to get there early, otherwise you won't get in and you'll get a token and you won't be allowed in till 1 a.m. And clubs in Exeter close at 2 a.m. Apart from vaults, which is open to 4 or 5 a.m. Now, this might sound really boring to you, but if you're in the club from 8 p.m. till 2 a.m., that's still a pretty, pretty long time. And the good thing about this is at 2 a.m., you can go get your McDonald's, you can go get your Sidwell's, which is a fish and chip shop, which has terrible hygiene ratings, but it is incredible, you have to go. You can get whatever munchies you need, and you can go home, and you can still get a really Really good night's sleep and go to your 9am lecture, which you don't want to go to, but you should go to. It's very, very strange and you're definitely gonna have to get used to it, but that's just Exeter. That is Exeter. Events that you absolutely cannot miss in Exeter. There are so many events, but here are my top picks. Tar barrels, which I don't understand because they get a barrel, they hold it in the air and they set it on fire and they run down the street. 
How does that pass England's health and safety? I have no idea, but it's really fun. There's EGB, which I can't remember what the E stands for. It's not Exeter, but the other bit's Garden Ball, and this sells out in 30 seconds. I have not been able to get a ticket, but this is a really, really nice event. Everyone dresses up, you go to this field, there's different tents of music, there's a Ferris wheel, and it's supposed to be really, really, really nice. Then there's Rugby Varsity. If you didn't know, Exeter has a massive stadium and a pretty decent Exeter Uni rugby team. Exeter rugby team's obviously great, but Exeter Uni rugby team is also pretty good. So Rugby Varsity sometimes get to use the official Exeter Stadium. And there's a halftime show with cheerleaders and we can pay tickets and go. And it just, it's just a really, really great time. And you can end up in TP afterwards. Then the next one is SSB, which stands for Safe Sex Ball. Now this ball is spreading awareness about safe sex. And this is a little bit of a controversial event because the theme is lingerie. So it's basically just a room of horny university students in underwear dancing and drunk. So I haven't been to that one. I do not have the ability <laughs> to parade around and get drunk in front of loads of people in my underwear. But um, if you do, definitely go to that one. I have a bunch of friends that went last year like this. So it can also just be a really stupid, fun time. And the last one is Batty Bingo. Batty Bingo is not your average old ladies bingo. It is Batty. You basically go to this massive auditorium and you get given five bingo cards and you play bingo as drunk as can be. You get so drunk you forget you're playing bingo, you miss numbers, Everyone's just drawing on each other with their pens instead of on the paper. And you can win prizes. I won a magnum of champagne once. I know a guy that went home with a bike, another that went home with an Xbox. And they do different ones throughout the year. So there's the Christmas one when they give you Christmas hats. There was a 007 themed one where everyone's in tuxedos and dresses. It's such a fun event. Next section is the city. Now, Exeter is not a very big city. It is in fact quite a small city, but the stuff in the city is amazing. We have an awesome high street. We've got loads and loads and loads of high-end stores. I will put a list on here. But we also have a lot of local businesses and small boutiques, which is really, really nice. We love supporting local businesses. There's also a load of thrift stores and charity shops. Charity shop wise, there's a street with about seven of them and you can just ping. And I obviously frequent those more than I'd like to admit. And my favorite thrift stores are Sobeys and The Real McCoys. There's so many thrift stores in Exeter. I still haven't been to all of them. Again, with restaurants, we've got loads of high-end chain restaurants and then some local ones as well. Two top picks would be Harry's, which is a little bit more pricey, but definitely good for an event. And the Old Firehouse, which is my absolute favorite. They basically do these giant square pizzas and you're supposed to share them, but obviously I just eat the whole thing myself because I'm a legend. <laughs> And the vibe there, the vibes are just immaculate, okay? The vibes are immaculate at Old Firehouse and it's right next to Northern Hay. So another point to Northern Hay for being an amazing accommodation. But it's always, always busy there. If you're coming with more than two of you, definitely book. There are three cinemas in town and one on campus. We also have a 10 pin bowling alley down by the Quay. The Quay is so gorgeous. There's more restaurants down there as well. It is just such a pretty place. I go running there sometimes. Obviously, the crowning jewel of Exeter is the Exeter Cathedral. This is an absolutely stunning building and it's surrounded by this lovely grass and a bunch of shops and restaurants. It's right in the center of Exeter. It is just such, such a nice place to go. And in Christmas time, they have the Christmas market on that green and it is just so wholesome and definitely a highlight. Gyms in Exeter. There is an on-campus gym. And if you pay for membership there, you get access to all the facilities on the Streatham and the St. Luke's campus. The St. Luke's gym is a lot smaller than the main Russell Seal gym on the Streatham campus. Campus. It is an incredible facility. The one thing I would say is that it is on top of a hill So it kind of feels like you've already done a workout by the time you've got there and it is quite expensive So if you go two or three times a week, it seems about fair But if you want to get that membership, you have to be committed You have to be committed to doing it. Otherwise, it's not worth it Another option is pure gym Which is a chain of gyms and that is in the center of Exeter Facebook groups that you need to follow first off if you don't have Facebook but get Facebook. It is the number one form of contact at university. All societies, sports, socials, events, everything happens through Facebook. So definitely, definitely, if you don't already have one, 
get a Facebook account and join these three groups straight away, right now. Overheard at Exeter. This is for everything Exeter information, people selling things, people who found student IDs, people who are spreading information about events and societies and sports and everything that's happening at Exeter goes on that page. And this is not affiliated with the university at all. None of these Facebook groups that I'm talking about are affiliated officially with the university, but they are run by students at the university. The second one is XFES, which is an anonymous confessions page. Loads of people can comment on it and there's some really, really funny stuff on there. There's also SexFest, which is exactly the same, but with only sex confessions. But definitely follow those pages, check it out, stay in the loop. It's a good time. A question that people often ask when they come to Exeter is whether they should bring their car. Short answer, if you don't need to drive out of Exeter, no. Everything in Exeter is walkable and having a car can be a real hassle because it is incredibly difficult to get a permit for parking on campus. If you really don't want to walk everywhere, I'd suggest getting a bike or using the public transport. We have three train stations for some reason and a really good bus service which has loads of buses going in and out of Exeter and also one that goes from campus to the high street, from the high street to campus, etc, 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 etc. You can also get taxis. I'd recommend Ola, which is like Uber or Apple taxis. Taxis. And there's also a shuttle bus that runs between St. Luke's campus and Streatham campus. So if you're one of those students that has a course with classes on both campuses, that is a free bus that you can use, but they only go at certain times. So if you miss that, you're gonna have to get the normal bus. But absolutely everything in Exeter is walkable and you get used to it so quickly. And as I say, your legs will be amazing. So the only thing that isn't walkable from Exeter is the beach, but that's a very, very short train right away and a really great day out. Student support. There is a lot of student support on campus. Firstly, there is your personal tutor whose literal job is to be there for you with any problems that you have, academic or otherwise. They will have office hours and you can just email them if you wanna meet up or just walk in the door when they're in. Definitely, definitely, definitely use your personal tutor. They can be an absolute lifesaver. Also student support, you can get a ILP or an individual learning plan. If you have like a disability or a mental illness or something like that, which just means that you might get extensions for certain works and teachers in class will know that maybe you need a little bit of extra help without you having to explain to every single teacher. You can also get therapy on campus at the Health and Wellbeing Center. I have not done this, but I've heard that you can get private or group sessions. Also, they sometimes have therapy dogs on campus, which which is obviously incredible. Alternatively, there's a lot of private therapists in Exeter that you can go to. Last section is just a bunch of extra tips. Keep your door open, especially in the first week, just to make yourself seem open and friendly. Do not stay in your room all of Freshers Week. Do your best. I know it could be so overwhelming and maybe you need to come back to your room a lot, but just step outside and try new things and talk to people as best as you can. For kitchen utensils, try and bring cutlery and plates that aren't just white or gray. Just bring something that stands out a little bit more so it won't get mixed up with everyone's stuff and you can just avoid arguments and avoid losing your stuff that way. Bring board games because that is such an easy way for a night in, especially if you're not into drinking or clubbing. Or even if you are, I love the idea of taking a board game to a pub and just sitting there and playing with some friends for a night. Games are always a really, really good icebreaker. If you have a spare TV just lying at home or you can talk to your flat and try to pay for one together, I definitely recommend getting a TV for your flat because it is great for movie nights and if someone has a Wii, bring the Wii! Okay, I cannot tell you how many second year houses have Wiis in them because everybody loves a bit of Mario Kart, okay? Every Everybody. My biggest piece of advice is probably to arrive a few days earlier than your accommodation starts or move into your accommodation a few days earlier than normal. I did this with my mum and it helped me out so much. I was able to gather my bearings and figure out my way around a little bit before everyone showed up and I was having to do everything at all at once and it was so much less overwhelming. Not only that, other people from my flat and my building came to me for help to get to places which really just meant that I got to talk to new people and make some potential new friends. So I would definitely recommend that. 
if not for the friends, but just for feeling less overwhelmed and more comfortable about things and where I was going and knowing where my classes were gonna be was just so, so handy. Most importantly though, this is just so exciting for you. You're going to a new place that nobody knows you for the first time and I would do anything to swap positions with you and get to do it all over again because it is such an incredible experience. But just be yourself. If you want any more information or you want a friendly face when you go to Exeter, my DMs are open. Comment down below in this video or text me in one of my socials. They'll be added at the end and also in the description below. My DMs are always open if you need any help now or throughout the rest of your university experience. And with that said, let us close this now, put it to the side and end this video. I hope you're ready to go to the best university on earth because I really really, really miss it. I am so, so excited and I hope to see you guys there. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you did like it, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more university content as well as lifestyle stuff and just general bad ideas. Click the notification bell so you know every single time I post and comment down below any more questions that you have or just to say hi. All right, that's it from me guys. Okay, bye. Skirt! If you made it to the end, you were an absolute legend. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I got a new mic for my phone, so I had to record this video twice. So here's what it sounded like before I got my mic. Probably gonna be really long, so bear with me. And here's what it sounded when I filmed it again with a mic. Sit down, strap in, grab a cup of coffee, and get ready to hear about the best university on the planet. So <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments below. Skirt! Oh, and join Sailing Club. Do it. You won't regret it. It's amazing. Just do it. Just join Sailing Club, okay? EUSC. Join it.